Welcome to episode two of Orchids with Short-Lived Blooms. I know that this may not exactly be what an orchid aficionado is looking for or wanting to grow, so perhaps this video will let you know which orchids not to purchase, even if the blooms are pretty. Alternatively, maybe the growth habit is the charm of the orchid and for that reason well worth growing. As we go through the alphabet, which will include genera starting from E through Z, always feel free to add any orchid or orchids that you grow, which only have a bloom duration of two weeks and less. That is my perception of what short-lived blooms are, and the ticker will repeat the disclaimer, which is important when it comes to my judgment of what I consider orchids with a short bloom duration. My time frame may differ from yours based on the conditions I grow my orchids in, and always feel free to add any information, even if it is contradictory, but also add your conditions so that anyone coming into the comments for more information can make a comparison based on your information and conditions with mine. I'm also referencing the bloom duration of single blooms because some orchids in this video may have a long bloom duration based on how the buds form, when they bloom out, but if you happen to purchase an orchid that has as yet to mature, the extended bloom duration because of multiple scattered blooms over an extended period of time will not take effect until some of the orchids in this episode mature enough to be able to make it happen. We're also going in alphabetical order, not based on the really short-lived blooms to the somewhat short-lived blooms. <laughs> The series of orchids with long-lasting blooms inspired Joe to ask about orchids with short-lived blooms. So thank you, Joe, for the inspiration. Let's go and see what I have in my database. But first of all, welcome to the patio. Thank you for clicking on this video. Thank you for your time and support that comes with it. Okay, Area hyacinthoides. This orchid, or better said, this genus, I don't see it often in private cultivation and possibly the short-lived blooms are the reason. These fuzzy, delicate blooms and spikes will only be around for a week, tops. Much like the Krista Erdmann in the previous episode, her spikes grow very fast and can catch you off guard while they are growing because they blend in with the structure so well and only at the latter phase of maturing do they become visible. Keep your camera close by when you see the spike because it will bloom out within two days and then another seven days of the blooms not fading. Uh, note to sell for next time because Dingaling here did not have the camera ready and did not document the fall blooming of 2024. I saw the blooms, I kept telling myself manana, and well, the next time I went to this orchid, the spikes were easy to pull off, they were done. There really is not much time to enjoy this interesting lily of the valley style orchid in bloom. That is actually the reason I bought this orchid because I saw the way she looked. I love lily of the valley and with that I assumed she would maybe also have a similar fragrance but nope I have a fragrance dud with mine which is possibly a blessing because what I've heard about the fragrance of this one it is not something that one would consider pleasant. Akin to dirty socks if I remember correctly. <laughs> with a little added extra detail I was told dirty foul smelling socks. So in a way I'm very happy to have this to look at and enjoy but not have to deal with the fragrance. Seeing as she also lives indoors all year round because of my low humidity. I have leaf tip dieback yet again. She usually blooms in spring but I have had straggler spikes early summer and also a few spikes show up at the beginning of fall. Indoors all she gets is bright shade and her temperatures range from 14 degrees celsius to 35 degrees celsius in a semi-hydroponic setup using Lekka. This worked for the first two years to keep her leaves pretty, but now that she has grown so large, the setup does not counteract the low humidity that I have in my environment. Now here is an interesting orchid in the Angrecoid family. And this one, it will take some patience to be able to enjoy a bloom show for four weeks, but know that each bloom will not last for more than a week. So to get the blooms to open pretty much at the same time makes for an abundant visual, but it is also over pretty quickly. It depends which you prefer, a short burst of fun and beautiful or an extended blooming with one or two blooms to enjoy over a longer period of time. This is Jamelia arborescens. When I saw the blooms in the listing, I had to have this orchid because, well, <laughs> Look, you tell me, aren't they just the most amazing blooms that are rarely seen on any orchids? 
I love them. The fact that it is a slow growing orchid helps to maintain its supposed medium size and keep the space issues on the shelves relatively in check for many years, minus aerial roots. As you can see, after six years of growing this orchid, mine has grown a lot of plants at the base and is also growing new fans higher up in the stem. Most of the fans at the base are now blooming size as well, which helps with some form of show, even though it is scattered. If I can keep her growing well, then in another three years, the lower fans will have reached a certain height so as not to have the long spurs get caught in and amongst the tangle of the leaves at the base. This orchid is not fragrant and she lives in bright shade for eight months of the year and then, well, the winters are a little gloomy for her. Her temperature range here is 14 degrees Celsius up to 40 degrees Celsius and this year is the first time I've had to keep a keen eye out for scale. All these years, she did not attract any pests. But 2024 has been a bit of a new on guard year when it came to a new form of scale on my patio, which many of my orchids and I had to deal with. So from when the spikes first start showing in the apex of the leaf joints to when she blooms out, that can take four weeks approximately. And as mentioned, also get your camera ready and take pics as soon as possible. Because in a challenging climate like mine, these blooms look frazzled at their tips within a matter of two days. I love her though, and I hope she will continue to grow well because all those fans of the base, I am digging the look of this orchid and want to see them bloom more profusely in the coming years as well. Please allow me a little shameless plug. To help the channel out, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you would like to double up on the support, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so. And a triple support would be a super thanks. Know that the orchids and I appreciate all of that, some of that, one of that, very, very much. Thank you. Now, Lelia Diana has only bloomed once for me and the bloom did not last beyond eight days. I would like to put a disclaimer on that though. It could be that she only bloomed so briefly because it was her first time bloom. I still want to include her in this category of short-lived blooms just in case you see her, want to grow her, and then only have her bloom for eight days. The orchid is a miniature and mine grows in a semi-hydroponic setup with a mix of 50% grit, 50% akadama, and some top dressing of lava rock. This orchid is not fragrant. She isn't a fast grower. And from what I have seen with my bloom, the bloom does not fully open either. It's a pity really, because the colors are stunning and the huge lip is a gorgeous, rich magenta, which cannot be fully enjoyed when the petals are hugging it. Again, first time bloomer has not bloomed for me again. So this is just tentative information. And I would appreciate your input on this orchid if you grow her and have had her bloom several times. I'd like to know how she bloomed for you and for how long. I appreciate any additional information. Thank you so much. Mine tolerates the standard temperatures from indoors and outdoors of 14 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius, all the while living in deep shade. At this stage, I prefer her to grow more growths than push her to bloom by exposing her to higher light. More growth for me equates to more roots, making her a stronger candidate. So perhaps one day I can showcase her in bloom again. And that would be around end summer, beginning of fall of 2025. Another great reason to stay tuned. A beautiful orchid, but wow, you are caring for this one for 11 and a half months, possibly add a couple of days to that, to then only have a bloom duration of maybe 10, maybe 12 days. And this is Lelia Perinii. And this is her in bloom at the time of filming. And well, she blooms like clockwork. Now you see how small the growths are that have grown in my care. This orchid is not a small or medium sized orchid when given the right conditions. Mine has to tolerate 14 degrees during the winter lows and 40 degrees during my summers, all the while in bright shade during the summer and in as high light that I can give her during the winter while she rests. Basically, this orchid rests from the time she finishes blooming in fall all the way through to midwinter, at which time she starts growing new roots from the growth that is currently in bloom. The root growth is very minimal and is painfully slow. So based on my year on year experience with my perinii, she is in the process of growing roots until she blooms on the next growth. And that is activity, active growth activity that we cannot see. With me, she starts actively growing a new growth 
early summer. So in order to be fair about giving the information as to the size of this orchid, I am going to go with the size of the growth she came with and deem her as large. During the bloom period, a wonderful elegant rose fragrance is evident from her. I love this orchid, I just wish I could grow her growths to how large they could be. Even though the size of the growths does not make a difference as to how many blooms she produces per spike, which has been too steady, while her first time blooming only produced one bloom but I know that this orchid is capable of producing three to five blooms per spike if she gets the perfect conditions. I have consolidated the next selection of orchids with short-lived blooms into the Rapiculus cattleya section because while some of them are long-lasting, check out the linked videos in the description for long-lasting blooms and there I have included the ones I have experience with in the ones that include the letter L Yes, it seems a little contradictory because here I am calling them cattleyas, but my database was set up for these under Lelia before the genus name changed. So forgive me, but alphabetically we are in fact going with R as in Rapiculus. <laughs> and that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I have had very short-lived blooms two times in a row with Cattleya colnagoi within the same 12-month grow period. So the first time bloom for me in spring of 2024, the only bloom that made it was immediately pollinated. Or so I thought. Well, she was pollinated, but anyway, the orchid bloomed again in late summer. And again, the first bloom was pollinated. Or is this something that this orchid does and it just self-pollinates? Time will tell. I'm watching out for the third time she blooms. But even though the other blooms opened up beautifully, they only lasted a week. This orchid is a true miniature. And as with all my Rapiculus cattleyas, it tolerates temperatures between 5 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. And I have them in bright shade for most of the year. More of that once we finish the other ones. I'll give you some extra details of how I keep them and why I do what I do. So the two miniatures, Regentii and Regina, bloom midsummer with blooms lasting no longer than 10 or 12 days. I have as yet to bloom many other Rapiculus cattleyas in my collection, so this grouping may need to be added onto and updated. Stay tuned for those as more of my little ones come into bloom for the first time. As mentioned, all my Rapiculus cattleyas live outdoors, dealing with a temperature range of 5 degrees Celsius up to 40 degrees Celsius. They are in a mix of lava rock, akadama, some are top dressed with sand in order to simulate the broken down debris they find in their natural habitat. During the summer months, I have them in bright shade and during the winter, they will get the full winter conditions, the winter experience, the weather permitting and full sun exposure. Now, while in their natural habitat, they can tolerate full sun during the summer months, understand that the reason behind me protecting mine during my summers is that they grow at elevation in their natural habitat where the airflow is pretty continuous and much cooler than what I have here at sea level in southern Spain. And a video like this cannot not include the genus Stanhopia. This genus has sensational blooms across the board, but the longest blooms have ever lasted for me on the patio has been four days. <laughs> that was a stretch. That was close, but it was pretty good. Usually, however, the blooms only last three days and the 24 hours just made a huge difference when it comes to being on top of the orchid while in bloom because it will take another 11 months and three weeks of care before she does it again. These blooms are highly fragrant and for the most part they are very large so it seems to be too energy consuming for Stanhopias to hold on to their blooms for longer. Okay, we can now say that some spikes open later than the others, thus extending the bloom duration over several weeks. But I only have this acidensis to speak on. And one year she was in bloom for six weeks because her spikes opened staggered, extending the bloom duration for that long. But this year in 2024, I had her in bloom for two weeks as the spikes bloomed pretty much simultaneously. So you see where I'm coming from. One year you could have six weeks because it's a staggered blooming and the next year hmm, it all happens in one go and poof she's done <laughs> and good luck with keeping up with the new growth uh, these orchids are thirsty anyway because of their vigorous growth to my understanding stanhopias are 
huge. Mine has a wingspan of one meter with a height of 80 centimeters, not yet including what's going on below the basket. And mine grows approximately 35 new growths per year. I have counted 41 in the last year. <laughs> I've stopped counting, so I'm sticking with 35 because that in itself is impressive. Know that they need a lot of light while not burning the leaves. They need high humidity of at least 70% or higher so as not to get burnt leaves, at least with good airflow so that they don't rot the growths but they should not be exposed to direct sun when it is really hot. And yeah, you can see with mine, this is what happens when there isn't enough humidity. Leaf tip dieback really is a huge issue and keeping her protected from direct sun is getting harder the larger her leaves get. And with that, before committing to a Stanhopia, remember the environmental requirements to have a lush and beautiful looking plant as opposed to one that grows well and looks a little bit scruffy by the end of the season because there's just not enough humidity around her to stop the leaves looking like this. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real on the patio. And the patio gets really small when an orchid of this caliber needs a whole area without having any alternative options to put it elsewhere. I can't bring her indoors to keep her safer from the five degrees Celsius she has to endure. And the same is true for the challenging summer months where 40 degrees Celsius can be a possibility with humidity of 30% on average. And no bueno for these guys. Now know that there are cold growing Stanhopias out there and this is still the safe low temperature range that you can take into consideration when growing them. So if you need any help with sourcing cold growing Stanhopias, let me know in the comments. I can be of assistance. But while the temperatures may be accommodated, never ever with Stanhopias forget that you need to keep the humidity with airflow nice and high. And that completes the list of orchids with short-lived blooms in my database. I hope you enjoyed seeing the options. Maybe it convinced you that some are fun to grow just for the sake of their cuteness or uniqueness. Thank you, Joe, once again for the inspiration. And if you have watched to the end, I appreciate the fact that you are giving me the opportunity to wish you a fabulous day. On the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.